Okay, now then let's give a round of applause to Christian, who's going to talk to us about cute responsive design. Thanks. Thank you. Well, hi and welcome to my presentation about cute responsive design and how to boost user retention. Uh, but first, let me tell a little story why I'm here today and why this topic is important. So, well, I started uh, programming apps and games around 15 years ago, back then for the good old PC, and then got started with mobile app and game development for the good old Nokia devices, uh, which was most of the time fun, uh, except when you started to create mobile games uh, for J2ME that should run on multiple uh, screen resolutions, different uh, hardware vendors, so like Nokia or Sony Ericsson. So that's when it was not that fun anymore. Uh, but anyways, uh, soon later, the iPhone came out and changed about everything. So do you guys still remember what, what year the iPhone was released, the first iPhone? Who knows it? Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 2007. So that's like ages ago, right? Uh, but why did it change everything? Also, last point that is out in this keynote today. Uh, it changed the way how we interacted uh, with mobile phones and how we used smartphones. Um, I, I could not even imagine being without a smartphone now anymore. Could you? And what it's also changed is the develop developer ecosystem that it created. So it allowed for the first time that mobile developers could target millions of users without needing a publisher. So they could distribute the mobile applications and mobile games uh, to millions of users without needing a publisher. So this new distribution channel was a, a real game changer. And it also enabled the rise of the indie developers. Um, soon time later, um, another mobile evolution step um, occurred, which was the release of QML or Qt Quick. So that happened as part of Qt 4.7 uh, back in 2010. And the first time I had a look at QML, I was like really surprised at how cool is this. Uh, it is like amazing how little code you, uh, you needed. It got like native performance and still a lot of code savings that you, could, uh, that you could have. And the release of QML was then the first and initial step of what was later the starting point of vPlay. Um, so we used QML and Qt to create the cross-platform gaming engine, which was specialized for 2D games um, by the power of Qt. And we ourselves also rose from indie developer to an established company, uh, got selected as a Qt technology partner last year, um, and have now recently cracked more than 10,000 uh, developers using vPlay on a daily basis. And there are hundreds of published games now out there uh, powered by Qt and vPlay with several million downloads. But what really allowed this rapid development approach was basically QML. Um, what it also allowed and, and, and shown in a, um, in a research last year conducted by Research to Guidance uh, was that we scored number one as a cross-platform tool which was easiest to learn and with biggest time savings, thanks to QML. What also really shows this quite well is the Flappy Bird story. So as you probably all know, um, the developer of Flappy Bird pulled the game off the app source all of a sudden from one day to another, and a lot of developers wanted to replicate this game. Um, we did, as an engine provider, we did the same, and what we managed to create the same game with the same game mechanics, even with the achievements and leaderboards and the uh, medal achievements and stuff like that, on the very same day when he pulled the trigger. So this really shows the rapid development that, that is into it. All of that was just a little bit over 800 lines of code. Um, and what also really worked well, and what uh, we, we, we are hearing from our users a lot, is that creating for multiple screens is very easy with vPlay. So, uh, the funny thing then was that vPlay was not only used to create mobile games, but also to create mobile applications. So we also used it internally for um, bigger client projects, for example, for Siemens, T-Mobile, or, or Novartis. But what we have seen is that game development, mobile game development, uh, has a lot of different requirements than mobile app development, actually. So like with the gaming engine, uh, we started to create um, components and a framework that now allows mobile app development, similar to what we have done with mobile game development. So there is a new set of APIs available called vPlay Apps SDK, 
which is now free to download on vplay.net slash apps, um, which uh, simplifies mobile app development, especially for iOS and Android. And, and the rest of this talk, I will now share the details and things you have to consider if you're going multi-screen uh, and what we learned along the way. So let's start with responsive design. Uh, what is responsive design actually? It's, it's giving the best experience, a native experience, based on the environment the user is running your app on. So it really does matter if he's using your application on a smartphone or on a tablet or on a PC. That's a whole different set of story. Um, for example, um, you have a different kind of view set that you want to wanna use on a phone than a tablet. In a tablet, you have usually a lot of more space, so you can show a lot more information uh, while you're on the screen and make life for the user basically easier. Also, what you want to have a look at is uh, density independence. So you don't want scaled, to uh, scale the UIs, what is mostly common in games, in your mobile apps because you're then wasting precious screen space, basically. Uh, what is also a tricky challenge is, as most of you know probably, uh, to, to have the same application running on iOS and Android because the navigation paradigms, for example, are very different. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see the, the Android navigation with a navigation drawer coming in from the left-hand side, whereas on iOS on the right-hand side, it's more usual to, to use a tab navigation on the bottom. So, and this is not the only thing. There, there's a lot of difference between iOS and Android, like page transitions, list views behaving differently, uh, dialogues looking different, and a lot more. So the goal that you actually would have is to reduce the platform-specific code and have as little iOS and Android-specific code, ideally nothing, uh, but instead only application code that can sh be shared across platforms. Uh, what you also want to look at uh, in most cases is to reduce the amount of C++ code that you have. Because what we have seen in a lot of projects actually that you can save a lot of time doing development in QML and JavaScript, especially if, if you have the choice what you, what you should choose. Uh, if you have existing C++ application logic, of course, or dependencies that are only available in C++, that's still a valid choice uh, to use C++ for that. So I will now show you um, a live showcase of, of some of the applications that we have built with vPlay apps. Uh, and this application is, is now live in the app stores. So if you uh, put out your phone and enter Qt into the app stores, we are now in the top three already listed uh, when you enter the Qt search term. Uh, and this application is available on iOS and Android in the app stores free to download. And also all the applications in there that I'll show you now are uh, coming as open source with the apps SDK. So this is just a matter of like 50 lines of code to do like, like these kind of animations. And it really shows the power of QML very, very well. Uh, another application that uh, we implemented was a, a Twitter app that looks like a native Twitter app on iOS and Android. So if I switch to iOS now here, uh, I can browse through all the tweets. This is, this is data really coming from the um, Twitter, um, Twitter service. You can have a look at the different tweets in detail and also have a look at profile page, for example. Another reason where QML really shines is doing um, animated UIs. And one of these animations you can see here on the top. So this is quite similar to the native Twitter uh, application on iOS. As you can see, this blur out effect on the top, which was like super simple to do in QML and any other frameworks. This is quite hard. Yes, and we also do have like a, a widget overview where you can have a look at uh, all the different components that we provide. For example, you can change the tinting at runtime. Um, you can see separate lists in here. Uh, and and this, this concept is called a split view or master detail view. And it's uh, really, really simple to use uh, from an application point of view. And the application logic does not change depending on what screen size you're running on. Uh, again, you can see here on, on iOS this back navigation works, for example. And also that the page transitions, if you compare this from Android with iOS, are different. So on iOS, you're used to having a page transition from the left, whereas on Android, pushing and popping is from the bottom and the top. Yeah, and you can see the different scroll view here. 
Uh, also, for example, if you're using a, a, a tab control in your applications, that's also different on iOS and Android. And all these things are, are abstracted by the, by the app components that we are providing. So you don't need to care about the platform-specific code anymore. In terms of lines of code, um, how much the application code of these, app, uh, of these applications was, the complete uh, messaging app is just like 100, 100 lines of code. Um, the, the Twitter application, with including the fetching from the data from a REST service from Twitter, is only 800 lines of code. The very application around 100, and the whole widget showcase 330. You can have a look at the full source code uh, when downloading the showcase app. Uh, as I said, it's part of the vPlay SDK. For free to download at vPlay.net. And it's also in the vPlay showcase app. Uh, you can find under this URL or just enter Qt5 showcase into the App Store search. So to sum this up, um, the, the biggest strength for Qt for responsive design and mobile app development are um, especially the powerful animations that you can achieve with uh, Qt Quick and QML. Uh, it's very few lines of code that you need, and it's built on proven tech. Uh, it's based on C++, basically. Um, also, there's a, a really fast uh, scene graph renderer in there, and um, you can also use JavaScript for quick prototyping. And use QML as a declarative language for defining your UIs and animations. Uh, also, it has a really good performance, and it's easy and clean to integrate your scripting and UI with C++. Uh, on top of that, what vPlay apps is adding are all the components that you have seen live now in the, in the demo app, uh, which allow a native user experience across platforms for iOS and on, uh, Android. So it, they were designed with mobile first in mind. Uh, these auto-adapting UI elements, where you have this master detail view, depending on the screen size. Uh, you get density independence, uh, as well as a lot of other components you can check out for free. All right, so let's head over to the second part then, which is how to increase user retention of mobile apps and games. So user retention is how to uh, increase the rate that your users are coming back to your application. And the tips that I'm now sharing are the best practices and examples that we have seen working in uh, games and apps that we have released so far. So number one thing that brings back users are push notifications. So if you don't already use them, I would, I would use them because they're absolutely one of the best things to, to bring your users back. There's two parts of notifications that you can use. There's local push notifications and remote or server-based push notifications. Um, for both of these, um, a plugin is already available uh, as part of the vPlay plugins packages. So you can download um, these plugins from uh, vPlay.net as well and integrate it with a couple of lines in QML like in this example shown here. Um, so the local notifications are even more easier to integrate if you're using PaaS for a push notification service. That's like a couple of lines more, but still doable within less than an hour. Another um, benefit to bring users back into your app is by sharing via social networks. So the key thing to this is uh, have a thought of what are the success moments in your app or game that is worth sharing. And if you found these moments, make it easy for your users to share these moments. Uh, these moments can be shared via Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram quite easily. So in the vPlay SDK, there's a one-line function call that you can call for sharing to these platforms. Uh, but you can also make uh, user images, for example, that can be shared to Facebook, which is really powerful to bring users back into your app. And one of the best forms of bringing users back is user-generated content. So not only limiting um, the, the content that you can share to images, but even more complex content. So there is a real, really big moving going on currently in game development and app development, uh, where the next big thing um, that is currently going on is that users can very easily create their own content and share this with the other users of your application. So this is, this is awesome in several forms of way. Number one thing is that you can save the time for this content creation on your own as development resources. Um, number two is that the users get a steady stream of new content right to their application. 
Uh, also, Nintendo is picking up on this movement now. They're releasing a Super Mario Maker has been released a couple of uh, weeks ago, where it allows gamers to create their Super Mario levels and share these with other players. And this is not only limited to gaming, actually, but you can also think about what are app use cases. Um, for example, if you have like a BMW car configurator app, uh, you could share these settings that the users have of their favorite car and share these settings with their users, with other users of your applications. Or if you make your application styleable and uh, allow them to share this style with other users. So there's many forms you could do this also in mobile applications. And there's already ready-made components that you can use to allow this runtime changing of any property in your app or game. So these are the level editor components available as part of uh, the Vplay SDK. They are skinnable to match your um, application UI. And there is also a way and views that you can use to make this content uh, browsable and explorable. So there's a rating already integrated where users can say, okay, this is highly useful content. Uh, this is content my friends have created and you can rate and share this quite easily. So there is uh, a couple of apps you can try out powered by Vplay that uh, demonstrate this user-generated content uh, feature. Uh, one of the biggest of them is Squabby with a couple of hundred thousand downloads and very many active users because of this user-generated content feature. Another thing you can consider um, is uh, leaderboards and achievements um, that are available already with the Vplay game network. So these gamification elements um, give your users a way to compare their, um, their experience with other uh, users of your applications. So think of actions that you want to make your users do, for example, app openings. So give them points and achievements for as, uh, that more often they open an application and reward them with an achievement. This really motivates them to come back more often and gives them a way to compare each other with their friends uh, or their users. Uh, the cool thing is this is, was written completely in Qt. Um, there's a, a backend also uh, to that, so that you don't need any server configurations. <laughs> and it's already made QML widget that you can just use in your applications in, in 60 lines of code. What it also does is that users can share their high score and achievement successes via uh, Facebook, Google Play Game Services, and uh, iOS Game Center from one single API call. So you don't have to implement all of these different gaming services on your own, but we have abstracted that already for you. Um, one more real retention um, booster is, is chat and multiplayer. So if you're having a, a look at the top uh, leaderboard scores of what are the most successful applications in the app stores right now, you will see one application on the very top, which is Clash of Clans. And in terms of highest retention applications, all the messaging apps are on the very top. Why is this? Because people and players and users love to communicate with each other and they love to play with and against each other. Um, with the latest Vplay release just announced like last week, we added chat and multiplayer support uh, ready-made as a QML widget for you to integrate into your Qt applications. So with just uh, a simple import, you can access, like you access a normal rectangle item, you can access a chat view item, uh, which you can then customize to your application and add an in-app chat um, to your uh, applications. And very easy to integrate from QML. There's also a multiplayer service newly announced, uh, which allows you to make your next Clash of Clans style game powered by Qt and Replay. And uh, what this is, is it's a lot of the features you, you usually want to see in multiplayer games. Like you want to play against your friends, you want to play against players who are the same or equal um, um, experience than you have. So you don't play rookie against very advanced players. And this is everything um, hidden in the uh, matchmaking and multiplayer SDKs that we are providing. So if you're having like any kind of multiplayer um, functionality upcoming in one of your applications, give that one a go. And uh, all of the tips I've given so far are, are worth nothing actually if you can't really measure them. So what is really important is 
that uh, you add analytics from day one after you release your application to the app stores because otherwise you're losing this data. There is two plugins uh, from us available that you can use as QML plugins, which is Google Analytics and Flurry. Google Analytics is supported on all the platforms that Qt is running on. Um, it's, it's built on the C++ uh, SDK by, by Google internally. And Flurry is available for iOS and Android. That's a matter of 10 lines of code and takes about 10 minutes to integrate into a Qt application. So make sure to add one of these or even both analytics frameworks to measure the success of your retention uh, actions that you did. So yeah, to summarize the retention tips that I've got is push notifications, social integrations, uh, user trend and content, and also gamification elements, where especially the in-app chat is also very suitable for um, normal mobile applications. And don't forget to measure everything from day one. So uh, if you want to see more about this, have a look at some of the demo games, uh, some of the games customers did, or uh, some of the mobile applications. Just talk to us outside. We are right uh, with the guys from Gimasi at their booth. Um, and uh, also make sure to check out vplay.net slash apps for the new release of the vplay apps SDK. And if you want to hear more about this, so this was the business uh, presentation. There is a tech presentation going on tomorrow at half past one, uh, where I'll show how to do uh, these tips and topics in your applications with real code. So make sure to join this one. And there's two lightning talks by uh, me and Alex, co-founder of vPlay, uh, later on going on today, which are also pretty cool. So thanks. I'm looking forward to questions. Yeah. Uh, we still have time for a couple of questions. Maybe you guys don't want to leave yet? No? Anybody has a question? What was that? Can you give a short overview of uh, the license model you have? Yeah, sure. Um, so there's four license tiers available. There's a free license um, available. Uh, and depending on how much uh, revenue your company makes, there is an indie developer's license, which is 50 euros uh, a month per developer, uh, up to enterprise level, which is 200 euros per month per developer. No, no. Uh, as long so, if you have a, a released and published application or game, you don't need to pay anymore. So that's during the de development process. So if you want to keep getting the latest updates, keep uh, the, the features of the Indian enterprise licenses, um, then the paid licenses uh, uh, are there. Yes. Um, can you integrate it like as a part of your own application or do you need the like the whole because I saw an app element there mm -hmm. can you also have like a window element where yes you, just you can you can also uh, use just some of the items uh, separately so you don't need to build everything on top of a root app element also the vplay plugins are built as standalone items so you can use them in your normal with a normal window root item that you're having and integrate them there. So is it possible to use it completely without QML, just using QWidget stuff and uh, C++? Yes, you could. But um, you basically, well, the, especially the mobile apps uh, components, they are made with QML. So it's more of the logic components that you can still reuse then. Uh, but you could also use it in a widget-based application, and then only the components are shown as QML views. Do you know about something about the competition between QML and the widget? Well, in terms of rendering performance, we have seen really good results with QML because it's scene graph based. So especially for, for games, uh, we were based on QGraphics view before, and it was like uh, really not usable in mobiles. 
that's why we did a custom renderer before Qt 5.2 was released, because the performance on mobile devices with QGraphics View was just not uh, acceptable. Um, do you have, so you have this nice widget set, do you ha also have a good solution for like native text editing? So I know, for example, that on iOS, if you type some text into the QML text field and uh, you select it, you don't have this loop feature and the selection doesn't work properly and copy and paste. Do you have a solution for that? Um, the, the app text is still based on the QML text input, but uh, we've yeah, we've done a lot of things that improve the experience of the normal text input that you're used to. So in general, if you're using Qt Quick Controls or any other QML items out of the box, they're not really working well on iOS and Android. So we fixed that. They're definitely well usable. It, it looks, looks good and okay. Especially also list views are, are always an, an issue in, in normal and cute apps. That's why we developed an app list view component, which fixes a lot of the normal list view things. Also dialogues, so you, have, you can access native dialogues, which do not have a problem when the virtual keyboard is coming up and things like this. Hello, here, um, after doing push notifications, do you notice any users in installing the application? I know some of my friends said they say, oh no, this application is doing this, I'll delete that. Do you have any <laughs> data? Um, I cannot sh share the data with you, especially not from the from um, c clients who who have used it to to improve the retention rate. But it was definitely worth the time spending into. So that I would uh, what what a lot of developers get wrong actually is ho how they um, promote push notifications to their users. So I, for example, would not ask them um, to if the application is allowed to send push notifications right in the beginning of the app start but just ask them when they see the value of the push notification. For the multiplayer parts, for example, I would only ask permission for sending push notifications if they're f starting their first multiplayer game. And then you will see a lot higher percentage of users who will accept it and then be happy that they are getting a push notification. So if you're getting at your turn at quiz duel, for example, um, you're happy that you're getting a not notification and you don't have a problem with it. Well, uh, time's over, so let's give a hand to Christian. Thanks for speaking to us.